Hello and welcome to my session Setup Work Management and Tracking for Your Team Using Microsoft Lists. Before we jump into the session content, let me introduce myself. So, my name is João Ferreira, I'm an Office Development MVP from Portugal and you can reach out to me through my social media accounts that you can find here in this slide, Twitter, LinkedIn and also directly through email joanferreira at andsontech.net or through my blog andsontech.net. So on today's session, I will explain you what Microsoft Lists is and how you can take advantage of it to improve the way you work with your teams in the Microsoft 365 environment. But before we deep dive into Microsoft Lists and the concepts of Microsoft Lists, first, let me tell you what Microsoft Lists is. Microsoft Lists is a new application in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem that was created as an evolution of SharePoint Lists to help users in the corporate and also in consumer markets to track, share and organize their work in an online platform that is available in the browser or directly from your pocket from your mobile device. Currently, it's only available for iOS, but with it will become available soon as well for Android and you will also find Microsoft lists available inside of Microsoft Teams in the context of your Teams. If you have never used SharePoint lists and you are looking forward to know more about Microsoft lists, you can think about this new application as a lightweight database where you can create, customize and adjust tables as work requirements change over time. So you have total flexibility to change your list over the time and to create extra columns or modify the existing columns as the business changes and as your requirements change. In your life, I'm sure you have used a lot of lists from simple things like paper to-do lists that you have on your screen with post-its to more complex lists that you create in Excel with complex formulas that help you to track your work. Well, all of that can be ported over to Microsoft Lists and you can easily share those things with your team so everyone has access to things that were only on your desk or were only on files that were locally stored on your computer. With Microsoft Lists, you will be able not just to store the data, but also to format it to display the most relevant data at any given time based on predefined conditions. And all of that will be explained today on this session. So you will learn how to create lists and you will also learn how to take advantage of Microsoft Lists and Microsoft view formatting in this new Microsoft 365 application. Before getting started with Microsoft Lists, you need to know how to access to it. Microsoft Lists has a unique URL for each user in the organization and it's available from a variety of different locations, but you can easily access to it by clicking in this Wayful icon and from here you will be able to locate Microsoft Lists. List is represented by this colorful icon and to open the only thing you have to do is click on it. You will also be able to access to it from other Microsoft 365 applications like SharePoint. And if you are used to SharePoint lists in the classic SharePoint world, uh, from a SharePoint list, you will also be able to open a list inside of Microsoft lists. But without further ado, let's see how Microsoft lists look like and let's click on this icon to open it. So this is Microsoft Lists and I will increase this window a bit more so you can see how Microsoft Lists look like and the components that you will find in Microsoft Lists once you open the application. This is the landing page of your Microsoft Lists application and this application acts as an aggregator of all the lists you have in Microsoft 365. This will get all the lists from your SharePoint sites, all the lists from your Teams and also all the lists that you have personally created using Microsoft Lists in the same location. So from here, we can um, divide this application in three different main sections. 
that we will see today. So the first one is the new list button. This is the main button for you to create a new list in the system. Then below the new list button, you have the favorite section. And this is the place that will show you all the lists you have marked as favorite. So instead of using the search or going to the SharePoint site or to the team to access the list, you can simply click on the star icon and from this top area, you will be able to easily open the list. And then here at the bottom, you have a list of lists and it will display the recent lists or the um, your personal lists, the one that you've created just for yourself. And you will be able to sort them by name, by newest, oldest, or uh, if you choose to see the recent lists, um, the filter here changes and allows you to also uh, filter the lists by the recent ones that um, you have created. Now that you know how to open Microsoft Lists and how the landing page of Microsoft Lists look like and how it works, let me show you how you can start creating new lists in this new platform. So uh, to create a new list in Microsoft Lists, you will have to click on the new list button and this will give you access to a variety of different ways that allow you to either create lists with custom schemas from scratch or important content from other sources to Microsoft Lists. Let's start by seeing how you create a custom list from scratch with the full flexibility for you to create all your columns. To do that, you should click in this blank list button and this will allow you to create a custom Microsoft list with just the title column. All the other columns you will be able to create later on once the list gets created so you create something that it's tailored to your business needs. Then, and as mentioned before, if you already use Microsoft Excel to track the work of your teams or to track your projects or to track your release dates, you can also import all that data to Microsoft lists and start managing the content from your teams using uh, Microsoft Lists instead of the spreadsheet. And to do that, the only thing you have to do in reality is click in this From Excel button. This allows you to either select an Excel file that you already have in your uh, system, or if you have it in your locally on your computer, you can easily upload the file by clicking in this button. To demonstrate how this works, I will select this video list uh, Excel file and I will click next and as you can see the application automatically grabs all the um, columns that exist in the Excel file and it, should, it suggests new columns for Microsoft lists with the proper uh, column type. If I do not agree with this column type that was suggested or if I want to change it from the Excel uh, to a new column type, I will be able to uh, change it here and uh, I will also be able to choose to not import a specific column if I don't want to bring it to Microsoft lists. Even uh, importing it uh, as a single line of text later on, you will be able to format this data to look differently once visualized inside of Microsoft Lists. You will also be able to uh, create lists from existing lists that already, ex that already exist in the system. So if you have a list from someone else or from another team that is being used already to track your work or to track projects, you can use that list as a starting point for a new list for another team or for a new project. And to create a list from an existent list, all you have to do is click here in the from existent list. And from here, you will then be able to select the list that you want to use as a source for your content. You also have the possibility to um, create lists based on pre-existent templates and uh, Microsoft 
has included eight different templates that are common across different industries that allow you to create lists already with um, things that were thought for things like issue tracker, employee onboarding, event itinerary, asset manager, recruitment tracker, travel, uh, requests, work progress, or even content scheduler. All of these lists uh, include dummy data that allow you to see how the list looks like, uh, what are the columns that are included, and uh, as you can see here, there is data that is displayed with different colors. These are custom formattings that are applied already to the list. So once you start adding data to your uh, list created based on this template, you will see uh, things pretty much like what you see here in the preview. And this is valid for all the eight templates that Microsoft included by default in the uh, Microsoft lists. If for some reason one of these templates don't make sense in your organization or you don't want to make it available for your users, as uh, an administrator, you will be able to then disable it so your users will stop having access to the template from this interface. You will also be able to create uh, a new list from a custom template made specifically for your organization. And to do that, um, you first need to create the list that will be your base template, and then an administrator will have to save it and add it to the platform as a template. Currently, there is no graphical user interface to uh, do that, and it has to be done using PowerShell, but to create a list based on that, uh, you have to click on this tab from your organization. And as you can see, I have here a few lists uh, already that were specifically done for this organization. And for example, if I click here in this context one, you will see uh, a major difference between the custom templates and the ones that were created uh, by Microsoft. In here, you will not see uh, any data as preview, you will just see the column names, uh, but um, this doesn't mean that this list does not include any formatting as well. So whatever option you decide uh, to start creating a new list, um, once you choose it and once you decide uh, to create it, uh, you will then have to uh, fill a form that will define the settings for the list. And to do that, let me select here a blank list so you can see what are the next steps and what are the specific creating settings for uh, a new list. In this form, you will have to fill the settings for the list and there are just a few options that you need to go through. So the first one is the name and this is mandatory and will be the main identifier of your list. I recommend you to select a few words that are related with the content or the purpose of the list so it will be easier for you and other users working with it to identify it in the list of lists in Microsoft lists. Then the description is an optional field, but you can use it to give more context to other users about the list and how to use it to achieve more out of the data that is stored inside of it. For the color and the icon, Microsoft lists include 12 distinct icons and 12 distinct colors from where you can choose and combine to give more context again related to your um, list. So these are the colors and all the icons that you can choose from. Then, and this is an important um, setting, you have to choose where to save your list. Despite being a new application, the Microsoft lists continue to live on top of SharePoint, but here you will find a new setting that didn't exist before, and this is important and allows you to save the list either inside of a SharePoint site or inside of a team in Microsoft Teams and in the correspondent SharePoint team site that is uh, powering that team, or if you are 
willing to create a list just for you and to keep track of your tasks of of your uh, content scheduler uh, you will be able to save it under your personal lists and these lists are stored in your um, personal SharePoint site this option however can be disabled by the administrator so if you don't see it in your talent it might have been disabled on purpose but here uh, once you expand this option you will be able to see um, your lists as the uh, main option if enabled and then a list of all the SharePoint sites from where you will be able to um, save uh, your lists in here once selected you will also be able to choose if you want to get a quicker access to the list directly from the sharepoint site navigation by default this option is checked but if you don't want it you just need to uncheck it so let's quickly provide here a name for this list just to show you how it works and how it looks like after the creation process it's done so it's pretty fast uh, the list is now created and before we look into uh, more complex lists and before we start looking into other concepts there's one other thing that i want to show you so you know how to create your custom schema inside of your newly created list so this was a blank list as you can see it only has a title column a title column exists by default in every list you create uh, but uh, you can create other columns and to do that you just need to click here in this add column and select one um, type of data for your column for example if I choose here date and time then uh, I'll be able to define the settings for this particular type of column or for example if I choose here a choice column I will be able to uh, then choose the uh, choices for the column and here in this section and using this graphical user interface um, I'll be able to immediately and without writing code uh, configure the column formatting that will display data with different colors uh, that allow then other users to easily identify um, different types of data inside of your uh, list. So this is uh, how the creation process works. Uh, now let's fast forward a bit and let's move to a list with um, a bit more content already so uh, I can explain you other types of features namely the um, list views and the different layouts that allow you then to interact with your data in different ways that until now were not possible with the SharePoint lists. By default, you will see data in a tabular view, like in Excel spreadsheets. However, with custom views and list formatting applied through a combination of JSON, HTML, and CSS, or simply through the uh, out-of-the-box functionalities that through a graphical user interface allow you to customize a list, you will be able to easily transform your list into a business application. If you are now um, starting with Microsoft lists, don't let the code demote you from customizing your list. As you can see in this list, I have as well columns that display information with icons and with colors, and all of this was achieved through the graphical user interface. Obviously, then once you get it configured and formatted through the graphical user interface, you can go a step further like I went in this one over here and you can change the um, code to include other icons or other colors and to do more out of your data. Obviously, this is for more advanced users, but I want you to know that it that it's a possibility so you can later on try it by yourself. If I switch to the design 
view again, I'll be able still to configure the column using background colors or choice pills or even configure the entire row by uh, using conditional formatting or just configuring the uh, column depending if we are configuring the formatting for the view or for the column individual. Just to show you an example here, this is how this interface works. So if um, a value matches a condition, then it will display as it shows here in this text. And I will edit this rule just to um, show you how this look like. So I will um, change the background color of the priority if it is high to be red. And just simply by doing this and saving it, now when I close the configuration pane, as you can see, instead of having the icon um, and the previous formatting, I now have it with color. So super simple to implement formatting over data that you already have in your list. As you may uh, notice and as you probably experienced, tabular views are not always the best solution to display data and Microsoft knows that as well. And depending on the purpose of the list, you may take advantage of having different types of layout to see the information. So Microsoft lists has a set of predefined list views that allow you to change the way the information looks like in your list. And using this example, I will show you how you can easily transform this data that is displayed in here into a calendar. To create new views or to access to other existing views in your list, all you have to do is access to this drop-down, the view selector located at the top right corner of the application, and from here you need to then create a new view. As you can see, there are four different types of views. List, that is the tabular view that we have now, calendar, gallery, and board. And I will show you examples of all of them, but let's start first with the calendar. So to create the calendar view, the only thing you have to do is provide a name for it. So I will call it calendar for releases. And I will select show as calendar. The only requirement for this list to work is to have at least one column of the type date and time in your list. It could be the default created column that exists in Microsoft lists that gets the value of the date when the item was actually created or it could be any other column. For this one, I will choose the due date and you have the possibility to define the start and the end date for a particular event in the calendar. For this particular scenario, I will make it uh, the, with the same value so it gets in the same uh, day and it will not be spread across multiple days in the calendar. So I will make the view public and hit the create button. And as you can see, now I'm getting the data in a completely different format where I can easily see what are the days for a specific um, feature to be uh, released or uh, when a specific feature should be completed. Then to access to uh, the data in the list, all you have to do is click in the uh, item and by doing it, it will open the details with all the information that was uh, in the tabular view. Uh, and uh, you can also see the entries for each day for scenarios where you have multiple entries for the same day, where they are not all visible in the same uh, calendar day. Then this overflow pane allows you to easily get uh, access to all the uh, events that were created out of 
um, your list. To create new items through this uh, interface, you can either use the out of the box new button located at the top of the window, or like um, Microsoft Outlook, you can over the they and click on the new um, link, and this opens then the uh, new item form so you can fill it with um, the data based on the schema of your list. Another way of seeing information in Microsoft lists is displaying it in a board view. So following the same thing that we did for the calendar view, I will quickly reach out through the view selector drop down and create a new view. But this time, instead of calendar, I will select board. And for this one, I will type board view for release. And um, for this particular column, you have to choose a choice column that will be used as the column of your board. So for each entry in the choice column, you will have a column in your board view. So for this one, I will select the status uh, and I will hit create. Like the calendar, this is super fast. And now instead of seeing the data in the calendar format, I now have the information in the uh, board view. And as I can see, I have one for in development, another one for launch, rolling out and closed. As you can see, um, the information that it's displayed here might not be the best one as it is showing twice due date and the uh, feature gets a bit uh, cropped. So let's uh, quickly change this and let's um, make it more readable and more adjusted to this concept. To do that, you just need to go to the view selector and from this view, you will get an extra setting called customize card. And from here, you can select what are the columns that um, are displayed in the card. So let's get rid of the due date and let's use instead the future and the feature description and also the uh, assigned to with the preview of the user that has this feature assigned to. So hit the save button, click on close. And as you can see, now I have the um, same board view with uh, different information displayed. Depending on the data that is stored in your list, your cards may look different. Uh, as we selected here, the assigned to uh, as one of the columns to be displayed. And this one is the only one with an assigned uh, person. This is the only one that display this particular field. Um, moving things forward throughout the process of the implementation is super simple. And all you have to do to move it and to change the value of the status column is drag and drop it. And once you drop it, the item gets automatically updated. So you don't need to uh, manually add it. To access to the information, like uh, the calendar, you just need to click on the item and the same property pane opens and you get access to all your um, information stored inside of this particular item. To demonstrate the gallery view, I will use another list that has a few pictures stored in the list and I will demonstrate how the content that it's a media element stored in the item can get highlighted so you can get a better notion of what the item is um, referencing to. So to create the gallery view, like we seen before with the other views, you just need to come here, select the gallery, provide a name, hit the create button. And like in the other ones, in super fast, it gets created. And since we have a column of the type picture with an actual image stored on it, the uh, view was intelligent to bring it 
to the top and to display it as the main element for this particular item. So all the information continues to be stored here. Like the other views, you can uh, click in the item and see everything that is stored in here. And you can go further and from the view selector, you can easily format the current view and by formatting the current view if you choose to change the layout of the card you just need to click in this link and similar to what we've seen with the cards in the board view you can select what are the columns that are displayed for uh, each card you can even choose to get rid of the image if you don't want to see it or if you have multiple images you can include the multiple images in here and that way your card will get bigger but you will get access uh, in a glimpse of an eye to more information that exists in the uh, card so like we've seen before with the column formatting all of these views allow further customizations and there are quite a few customizations available um, made by the community that will allow you to take more out of Microsoft lists and to get access to those customizations you uh, actually need to go to the um, PNP uh, GitHub repo and get access to the um, repository so I will quickly open it up here and as you can see these cats um, column samples view samples and uh, you just need to grab the code from the um, repository, follow the instructions, and uh, then create the list based on this with the code applied. Just to give you an example, I will open a to-do sample that exists in this repository, and this allows you to transform a Microsoft list into something similar to Microsoft to do where you can either manage your group or team tasks or individual tasks using a Microsoft lists. From here you can see that um, these are the types of columns that you must create in order to get this and you also get the code for the formatting. So um, it's um, just copying it from here and adding to your list and just to show you how uh, it looks like this particular example i already have it here uh, and this uh, is the to-do formatting so this is how it looks with the formatting applied i can interact with it and i can mark things as completed and as i do it changes from um, the to-do group to the completed group and all of this was done through a custom formatting and that happened when I clicked in the format current view and then uh, in the advanced mode I pasted the code from the repo. Uh, this uh, is still Microsoft lists under the hood and to prove it I will quickly change to the all items view and as you can see this is what's under the hood still the microsoft lists that we've been seeing but with a different formatting a more advanced formatting applied to it so whatever business requirement you have you may find a solution for your problem and it doesn't need to look like this it can easily be transformed in the business applications that your users will identify with and can easily get the information that they are looking uh, for. There's a lot more to tell about Microsoft lists and a lot more options that available, but there's no time in this session to go through all of this information. So I want uh, to wrap up with um, three important tips that will help you to achieve more and to better use and access um, information stored in Microsoft lists with your team. So the first one and uh, one of the most important is that Microsoft lists, despite being a Microsoft 365 application, it is also available as a team application inside of Microsoft Teams. So if I open Teams here in the browser, you will see that Microsoft lists can be 
added as a tab to a team and that not only allow users to create new lists but also allow users to access to existing lists in this context so when you click to add a new tab you will find an application called lists this is microsoft lists for microsoft teams then you have to save it and once you save it you get access to a different interface from what we've seen uh, with the desktop and web versions of Microsoft Lists. From here, you have the possibility to create a new list or add an existing list. If you choose to create a new list from here, uh, there's one important thing that will happen is that uh, you have no option here to select the place where the list will be stored. Automatically, the list will be stored in the SharePoint site that it's connected to this team in Microsoft Teams. And um, the same way you access to other lists, then from the Microsoft Lists application, uh, you will see it popping in the list of lists um, in your application. The second tip that I want to share with you is um, to install the uh, Microsoft Lists as a PWA application in your system. Uh, the Microsoft Lists is prepared to be installed as a standalone application like any other application in your um, computer. And if you don't have it installed yet, once you open the first time, you will see a pop-up saying that there's a new Lists desktop app available with an install button. You can click in the install button and uh, the magic will happen automatically. If it doesn't happen automatically, then uh, with Microsoft Lists open and using a Chromium-based browser, it could be Google Chrome, it could be uh, Microsoft Edge, you just need to go to the menu and then go to Apps and click in the Install this site as an application. And from now on, instead of opening the application in the uh, browser, you will get access to Microsoft Lists directly as an app in your system, like what I have here. It's still the same thing that is in this tab, but it's a dedicated application with Microsoft uh, Lists. And I can pin it to my taskbar, I can pin it to my start uh, menu and get access to all the lists without the need to specifically go to Microsoft 365 and open lists from um, the, the lists of apps. Finally, the last thing um, that I want to share with you is that Microsoft Lists is now also available in preview for uh, Microsoft personal accounts. And this means that you don't need to get a Microsoft 365 account to use Microsoft Lists, you can also start using uh, with your Hotmail account or Gmail account as long as it is a Microsoft account and to access to that personal version of Microsoft Lists, all you have to do is access to lists.live.com and from here I just need click in the sign in button and if you are not yet registered I recommend you to go ahead and register this application it's still in preview and it's limited to 200,000 uh, users this is a great uh, application for you to start uh, keep tracking of your personal collections or even uh, your uh, meal uh, recipes just a quick example of what I'm doing with this list uh, in my personal life. I'm a diecast uh, car collector. So in this uh, list, I have my collection um, stored in here. And as we've seen before, uh, we can store information in a grid view uh, or we can go ahead and change it to gallery and this way get more visual information about the content we have stored in the list so this was the third 
tip and the last one that I want to share uh, with you. If you have any question um, and if you want to ask me anything after this session, feel free to reach out uh, to me on uh, social media or directly through my mail and hope you have enjoyed uh, the session and hope you, you will take the concepts that were explained here to your teams and achieve more using Microsoft lists. Bye-bye.